Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, my name's Jared. Today I'm going to be testing the engine on my EG Civic, my V16. So if you've been following along previous videos, we went to the dyno and the cartoon and ended up making 116 kilowatts at the hubs, which is lower than what I was expecting. And I just wanted to test the engine to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm gonna do a compression test and a leak down test just to see whether some of the compression has been lost from piston wear or valve adjustment or the valve seats are worn, something like that. We're just gonna diagnose whether it's lost compression or there's something wrong. So to do that, you need these following tools. So first up is a compression tester. So this is a kit I bought online. These are very cheap and in inexpensive. This was probably about $30 or $40. It is gonna be fine for the job we're gonna be doing. Essentially what you do is you connect this fitting into where the spark plug goes and you connect this to the gauge. And when you crank the engine, it's gonna give you a pressure reading on the compression or how much compression the engine can produce per cylinder and then after that we're going to go to this leak down tester which uses a similar idea so you connect the hose into the spark plug tube and then you connect this pressure gauge onto there and you supply it with compressed air so you will need an air compressor for this and then from there when you supply it pressure on this side of the gauge, it's going to give you a reading on the amount of leak down or pressure loss um, compared to the pressure you're supplying. The other thing you can do while you're testing this is you're going to be listening for air coming out of the dipstick tube, which would indicate compression being lost through the piston rings going into the sump or air coming into the exhaust which would indicate an exhaust valve leaking air going through the intake which would be an intake uh, valve leaking or potentially you might get pressure or bubbling in the radiator which could indicate a blown head gasket where it's leaking into the cooling system before you do these tests it is best to get the car up to operating temperature because that's going to ensure that the pistons and the rings have expanded from thermal expansion to be uh, best fitting in the bore. If you do it when the engine's cold, your readings are most likely going to be lower than when they're warm. And the warm readings are a true indication because when you're operating the vehicle, it's going to be at temperature, not cold. So then the first thing we're going to have to do is remove this spark plug cover just with these four bolts and take the spark plug leads off to get to the spark plugs. So these are the plugs that come out and they look good to me. To tell if it's running well, you've got this strap on the top. What you want to see is a couple of millimeters or halfway up that strap, a black line. So this is going to indicate uh, the air fuel ratio mixture. So if the black is all the way to the end of the tip, that is way too rich. If it is completely white, even down to the threads, that is too lean. And then if you look inside of the spark plug, what you want to see is about halfway to three quarters of the middle porcelain to be white. If the whole porcelain is black, that indicates not enough ignition timing. And if it's all the way down to the bottom white, that indicates too much ignition timing. And both of these plugs look all of these plugs look very good and consistent between them all. So they all look like they're running very well. 
So it wouldn't indicate to me that there's a problem with one particular cylinder. They all look very good. The tube is in as tight as possible. Next we're going to connect the gauge. So gauge is on. We're going to sit it there. So we want to crank the engine with the throttle open. So you want to hold your foot on the pedal. So we have a reading of 230, 240, somewhere between 225 and 250. That's very good. So then we'll release that pressure. This one's right on 225. That one again, 225 to 250, maybe closer to 235, 230. And the last one is close to 250, it's like 2, 245 probably. It's the best cylinder. So what do those results mean? Well, the pressure reading you're going to get is dependent on the compression ratio of your engine, high compression ratio giving you a higher reading on that gauge, how old your engine is, how worn the engine is. To know whether that's good or bad you're going to have to look at your specifications for your engine that's recommended by the manufacturer or maybe your engine builder. So for me this being a naturally aspirated high compression engine over 225 is probably what I would expect. I'm not sure what these are from factory, but this engine's been rebuilt 10,000 Ks ago, and I still think that's very good readings. You wanna see 10% variation between the cylinders. So we had 225 to 250, and that 25 would be 10%, so I've got 10% between the cylinders. So um, it's definitely not perfect, but it's within the acceptable range of, of this engine. So next we're going to move on to the leak down test because that'll tell us uh, a bit more information whether we potentially could be losing some pressure somewhere. But the results from this initially indicate that I think the engine's very good. If you had low compression, this is going to help you determine where that compression's gone. Like I said before, exhaust, intake, head gasket, uh, worn piston rings. This is an east-west engine, so we're gonna to have to turn the engine to top dead center. To do that, you'll need to remove the wheel to get to the crankshaft pulley bolt, as you can see there, because we're gonna to have to turn the engine over. When we do this test, we have to do it at top dead center, because that is the point where the intake and the exhaust valves are both closed. If it's anywhere in between that, the pressure's just going to go out either of those two valves. And then when they're both closed, we'll be able to determine where the leak's from. So to do that, you can get a long screwdriver like this. And then as we turn the engine over, what should happen is as it goes to top dead center, the screwdriver is going to rise. And then when we go to bottom, it's going to fall back down. So we want to turn it to the point where it's at the top. So I've made this contraption it's just a 90 mil socket with a long extension so that goes on there in there and then now you can turn the engine quite easily and remembering that these B series are anti-clockwise engines they don't turn clockwise so you need to turn it to be safest in the direction that it normally runs. So we're going to turn it anti-clockwise, watching that until it gets to the top. So it's going down at the moment. And then we want to watch it come back up. Almost there. I think that's it. Got some sort of resistance. And then I would suggest to take this off 
in case the engine does turn when we put pressure in because the pressure might push the piston back down. I almost just had a heart attack. I couldn't get that first cylinder to read correctly, even after watching another video and reading the instructions. So I went to take the hose back out and the worst thing that could have happened did happen. And that is the hose came out, but the fitting is missing. So then I was like, shit, the fitting is stuck in the spark plug tube how am I going to get it out? And luckily I had these long nose pliers and I was able to grab the tip of it and just turn it because it wasn't that tight and I luckily got it out. But oh, yeah, this this kit I bought, even though it was cheap, it was definitely not good enough quality and that was just hand tied in there. But you can see it's just a barb fitting and it wasn't crimped on correctly. So unfortunately, couldn't get the leak down tester to work. The fittings on the two were just too dissimilar and I couldn't get it to, to connect up. But I think personally, the compression test, if your results are good in the compression test, that tells, says that the health of that cylinder is overall good. If it was bad, you would need the leak down tester to actually pinpoint where it was bad at what what of the four points where it's leaking but for me all the results from the compression tests were within a range which i think is healthy and what is expected given when i did the initial compression test after when the cylinder's still holding pressure you can hear some of that pressure slowly leaking down and when i pulled the deep stick tube out you could actually hear a little bit faintly the air in the dipstick so i'm thinking on those first three cylinders where it was slightly lower than the fourth i think it's just the cylinder the piston rings are just slightly more worn on those those pistons not to say that it's bad it's just more worn than the other and it could be a result of the tuning before and when I first got the car, it had the original four injectors and they were slightly damaged. So it could be different air fuel ratios in different cylinders that has resulted in different amounts of wear or the oil um, lubrication from underneath is not as good in those cylinders. But for me, with what I want to do with this engine, I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And even when I was turning over the engine, I could see that the crank and the cam uh, pulleys were all lined up correctly. So the engine's definitely in time as well. If you have any other ideas where potentially the power loss could be going or whether it's just the hub dyno what we're on, let me know below. If the video was interesting to you, put a comment down as well. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.